Leyland are expected to offer many of their workers an extra £30 a week over two years. BBC staff are putting in for 30% rises. Many people are spending more of their holidays at Heathrow Airport. The TUC's Mr Len Murray says he's going to try to help. And that's the news so far this evening. Good evening. Good evening. Bristol Corporation admitted today that it was a mistake demolishing hundreds of perfectly good homes in the Totterdown district of the city to make way for a road that isn't now going to be built. Hundreds of people had to be rehoused, many of them against their will. And now the council announced today that they're to spend millions restoring the area which has been lying derelict for years. Well, also tonight from the Forest of Dean, the MP who wants to know why these workers can't have their 60 pet percent pay rise when he says their firm is making grotesque profits. <laughs> Meanwhile, businessmen back the Lydney firm blacklisted by the government for evading the pay guidelines. Mud on the Mendips, but the sheep fair goes ahead just the same. And it doesn't stop the trial bikes at Doddington either. The Chinese dancers step out at Bath tonight. <laughs> and 4,000 pheasants stolen in the latest wildlife theft in Somerset. And at Lords, it's been another Gillette Cup washout for Somerset. They'll try again tomorrow, and if that fails, on Friday. And if that fails, next Wednesday. And if that fails, well, nobody seems to know. It looks like the weather's not playing cricket either. Here's Graham Miller. The Chief Constable of Avon and Somerset has rejected a call for policemen to be equipped with riot shields and helmets when handling football hooligans. Mr Kenneth Steele said he thought the existing methods were satisfactory for dealing with the problem. The controversial proposal was made yesterday by the local branch of the Police Federation who are demanding extra protection for controlling football crowds. More heavy rain in the west today. The Met men say an inch fell in the last 12 hours, making the total for the month just under 4 inches. But there's a long way to go to overtake the August record of 5.3 inches that was set in 1950. Meanwhile, the continuing downpours have brought the West Country harvest to a halt again. The National Farmers Union say the repeated soakings are rapidly reducing the quality and quantity of the crop. More rain tomorrow, it seems, too. An admission from Bristol Council today that hundreds of homes in the Totterdown area of the city had been needlessly knocked down for a road that's not now going to be built. The admission comes as the council announced progress on a scheme to resurrect the area and restore the houses that are left. It would be hard to picture a more rural scene than this, but in fact this meadow was once one of the busiest housing areas in Bristol, called Totterdown. But then somebody somewhere decided that a major road scheme was going to come through here and totter down, literally, came tottering right down. All that's left of this large section of totter down are just empty fields. Well now the whole situation has been reversed. The big road's not coming through and a new totter down is all set to rise from the ashes of the old. The older areas like this are going to be improved and government grants will be made available for people to bring their houses up to a pretty high standard. A lot more amenities are going to be put here and those wide open spaces, well, they could be turned back to housing again. A very strange turn of events indeed in the story of totter down. Despite furious local protests, 1972 saw the people moving out and the bulldozers moving in. The planned ring road round Bristol was coming and anything or anyone which stood in its tarmac path had to come down or move out. Hundreds of homes were demolished, whole streets vanished to make way for a mini spaghetti junction of roundabouts and flyovers. Then a mixture of economic realism coupled with new government thinking on inner cities eventually saw the ring road being abandoned. Totterdown had fallen down for nothing. But now the good news. Most of the houses that remain are in a new housing action area. Schemes are being drawn up to improve the property, in many cases using government grants and loans. 
Well, all this is fine for those who still live in Totterdown, but surely it's another bitter blow for the people who moved out for nothing. That's true, and uh, I can only say without dodging his shoes that the decision to, in fact, put the road uh, through Totterdown, I personally believe was a mistake, but that's uh, water under the bridge now. I'm sure those people would have loved to have had the opportunity to have remained in Totterdown and to have took advantage of the grants which will be payable on houses to bring them up to an improvement. What we can do is to pick up the pieces from now and to see that Totterdown again becomes a decent place to live in. Looking back, uh, was uh, the knocking down of Totterdown a big mistake or could it not have been avoided? Well, obviously one must look back and say it was a mistake. It is, in my opinion, always a mistake to bring a major road through the heart of a city. You should take it outside the city and create the ring roads as many continental towns have done or since the end of the war. So now a new Totterdown will arise. The council now hope to improve houses, provide more shops and amenities. There'll eventually be houses on those green open spaces. There's just one irony. Bristol Council will have to buy back the land. They gave it to Avon to build the road that never came. With the rain pouring out of the gutter there, it's not exactly the day to be out and about today, of course, but at Pretty in the Mendips today, the show still went on, despite the rain and the mud that threatened to interfere with the traditional sheep fair that's been happening now for 500 years. Pretty green, scene of the 527th annual sheep fair, became a quagmire as the rain poured down. But it didn't keep away the farmers. More than 2,000 head of sheep came under the hammer, and experts said prices were average to good. The auctioneers say demand for sheep has risen tremendously over the last few years. As well as the serious business of sheep and horse selling, there were plenty of attractions for the youngsters, including the traditional fun fair that's held during the sale. Enough rain there at Pretty to shrink a sheep's skin. Well, more news now from Ken Rees. And the latest moves in two West Country situations involving the government's pay code. First, a major row in the Forest of Dean. Mr John Watkinson, West Gloucestershire MP, today attacked the giant Beecham Company for doubling its payout to shareholders, while some of their employees, he says, are on the breadline. 400 workers at the Colford Beecham's plant in the Forest of Dean have been on strike for three weeks, asking for rises of up to 60%. According to Mr Watkinson, it's a grotesque situation where a firm can get round the government's dividend control but not give a big pay rise to their workers. The firm have said they're not prepared to give any rise which exceeds the government's pay guidelines. Well, Mr Watkinson intends to raise the issue with the Chancellor, but today the firm hit back. They accuse Mr Watkinson of irresponsible intervention in their dispute and of misleading the workers by linking dividends with wages in this fashion. Meanwhile, there's support today for the tiny Forest of Dean firm blacklisted by the government because they broke the 12-month rule with a recent pay rise for their 17 workers. The firm, Reynolds Tanker Services, was today given full support by members of the Union of Independent Companies who were meeting in Bristol. The union represents 300 small firms and today Gloucester branch chairman Gough Molyneux summed up their attitude to the practice of blacklisting firms who infringe the pay guidelines. Well, I've been talking to my members this morning and, and basically they're appalled at this situation of a small business um, employing only 17 people um, and being blacklisted by a monopolistic situation. But clearly the government would say they've broken the pay code, we must crack down on them. Well, this is it, but you've got to remember the enormous weight of legislation small businesses are faced with. Um, and it's only natural that occasionally somebody is going to make a slip-up. Um, and this is what's happened, I think, in this case. You're saying that there was no intention of evading the code then? Oh, absolutely not, absolutely not. Problems of the pay code. Mr Glyn England, the recently appointed chairman of the Central Electricity Board, is at present on a tour of the nuclear power stations along the Bristol Channel, the biggest nuclear power concentration in Europe. Well, he was at Barclay yesterday and Albury on 7 today. He said that there have been discussions with three more nuclear power stations at Portbury near Portishead, Head, Port Skewart near Caldicott and another one at Albury itself. The new chairman toured the Albury on 7 nuclear power station today after giving a progress report on the industry. He said he wanted to step up the development of nuclear power stations and with the three sites mentioned, the West is likely to continue to have more stations than any other region in Europe. 
Well, people living near the present nuclear sites are constantly expressing their fears. So I asked the chairman... How safe are they? Our own experience, and that's now very considerable, is that they are very safe. Uh, we've been running reactors for 15 years. In total, our experience is equivalent to uh, one reactor running for 180 years. And I'm advised that in the whole of that time, uh, there's been no harm attributable to radiation to any of our workers or to any of our neighbours. You say the progress of power stations is good and also that they are very safe. Are there any plans to build any more? Uh, not just at the moment because uh, currently we have sufficient electricity generating plan to meet the demands of customers now and for the next few years. But fairly soon we shall be wanting to progress to place more orders for power stations of various sorts, including nuclear stations. Here in the Bristol Channel we have one of the highest uh, conglomeration of nuclear stations in Europe. Is, is the Bristol Channel again in your sights? Yes, the Bristol Channel has made a very significant contribution to the development of nuclear power and there are some other sites which have been discussed in public which could be developed at some time for further nuclear stations. Air traffic controllers at Bristol Airport are expected to defy a call from their London colleagues to support the bank holiday strike due to start tomorrow. The nine controllers at Lulzgate are still awaiting official instruction from their union, Nalgo. But even if they are ordered to boycott flights diverted because of the strike, it's thought they'll refuse. A union spokesman said they were extremely concerned about Bristol Airport's future and didn't want to jeopardise their jobs. Twelve people were taken to hospital this afternoon after the coach they were in crashed with a lorry at Bulford Army Camp near Salisbury. None were seriously hurt. A new tyre specially designed for motorcycle trials has been launched today by the Melksham-based Avon Rubber Company. It's called the Mud Plugger after the slang for motorcycle trials, mud plugging. But after the heavy rain today, it wasn't the best of days to show it off. Well, the secret of the mud plugger is that it's made of one radial ply built over two cross plies. It makes it possible to use a minimum pressure of only two and a half pans per square inch, which gives the tyre more spread and a better grip. Doing very nicely too. We move on to the weather forecast, talking of mud, and I'm afraid that tomorrow showers will develop, and they will be heavy at times. The temperature 18 centigrade, the outlook is scattered showers, sunny periods. Our outlook is we'll be back in a couple of minutes from now.